Hello and welcome to On The Curves. I'm your host, T. Marcus Daly. Joining me this week is W Series driver, Chloe Chambers. We caught up just after the sad news that W Series wouldn't be finishing off its 2022 season as planned. Chloe and I discussed this, as well as what W Series and Driving for Jenna Racing, alongside three-time W Series champion Jamie Chadwick, has meant to her, how she became a Guinness World Record holder, where she'd like to race in the future, and much more. I hope you enjoy our conversation. Hi Chloe, thanks for being here today. First of all, how are you? Hi, uh, I'm good. How are you? Yeah, not too bad, thank you. Happy to hear you're well. So, first question I like to ask everyone I chat on here, what first got you interested in motorsport? Well, initially, I just kind of grew up watching Formula One, uh, mainly through my dad. He was always a big Formula One fan. So naturally, I grew up watching it with him. And he just had a huge interest in cars. And so he would always work on his car and take it out for track days and autocross days. And I would uh, tag along with him. So I got to kind of experience a little bit of the car racing world um, when I was young. But then I, at seven years old, had asked if I could drive, but obviously I can't drive a, a, a car <laughs> that yeah, young. Go. So, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so my dad had known that go karting was basically the way that every professional racing driver gets into professional motorsports. So, mm. me and my mom, uh, they looked up some karting tracks and I had my first lesson. And kind of spiraled from there, shall we say? Yeah. <laughs> Like I said, I was looking at your, your racing records and you spent a lot of time traveling across the U.S. to compete in, in racing now. And Florida, California, New York, kind of a little bit of here, there and everywhere. What was that whole experience like? Well, to me, being so young and being able to travel to so many places. I mean, at this point, I was only really racing in North America. So I would take mm. a few trips up to like Canada, but I would travel all over the United States. To me. It was really fun. I mean, obviously, I was going to all these places to do what I loved. So, uh, yeah, I mean, I enjoyed it a lot, and I still do. Did it kind of just seem normal, I guess, to do that after a certain point? Yeah, I think I grew up with it being like that. So I guess to me, it was normal, but to other people, it definitely was something <laughs> different. <laughs> I'm just going over to California. Oh, I'm just going over here. Like, oh. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> It's kind of that method of, of traveling around, going from race to race. It's kind of aggressively expanding, shall we say, since you joined W Series, you're just doing it on a much bigger scale. So how did you come to join W Series, first of all? And how did it feel to join Jenna Racing of all teams? Well, I first got into W Series. Um, just I was invited to the shootout that they had earlier on this year in Arizona. So... Mm. It was in the U.S., so for me, it wasn't a huge travel. Um, I'm so used to just around yeah. the place at that point. So Yeah, yeah. At this point, I've already gone to the West Coast a couple of times to do races. So Arizona wasn't too big of a travel for me. And they used the F4 cars that we use in the U.S. So mm. last year in 2021, I raced in the F4 United States Championship. So I had experience with the car. Um, and then the track was brand new. Um, hmm. And so, yeah, I mean, the shootout took place and then I was invited to the test in Barcelona. And then after that, um, basically, that's where they decided who would do the full series for the year. So that was how I got into W Series. But the test in Barcelona, we had not chosen teams yet. So I didn't know that I was going to be with Jenna Racing, but I had a little bit of suspicion just because <laughs> they were an American team and I'm, I'm, I was the only American driver this it, year. It made sense so, to you, at least. <laughs> yeah, it made sense to me that I would be with Jenner. So um, it ended up playing out that way. And I thought it was just really cool, like just mm. to be able to go and tell my friends and just people who have no idea anything about racing to tell them that I'm racing for Caitlyn Jenner's team. I think just like, kind of shows how there, far yeah yeah everyone was really surprised and it kind of shows how far racing has come in the united states oh definitely and 
I mean, you, like you say, you're used to traveling around America at that point. Was that your first time going to Europe as well? or? Well, my dad is British, so I've been to the UK. Okay. But before Barcelona, I've never actually gone to like mainland Europe. Mm. So you're kind of three in the deep end a little bit then. Yeah. <laughs> and so the, the initial feeling then when it was confirmed that you were going to be joining General Racing and I mean, by itself, you've got Caitlin Jenner in charge of that team. That's enough to get your head around. But then you find out that Jamie is your teammate. Which one of those was kind of more surreal for you? Or is equally kind of what's going on here? <laughs> I mean, I think just the whole thing with W Series and me getting to race with Caitlyn Jenner's team with the reigning two-time champion and just all of that in itself was just uh, me really in the perfect position this year just to learn and develop. I had the right people around me, basically. I was going to say, following off of that, over the course of a, a race weekend, how much time would you spend with Jamie and what was it like having her as a teammate? You say you learn off her, was it a matter of comparing data her giving a bit of advice here or is it kind of you stay in your lanes and we don't we don't share we're competing against each other well the way the w series does all of like the sharing of data and video everybody can see everybody's data and video and we share a driver coach um so mm. naturally we would sort of do things in parallel with each other um i don't think necessarily like she was trying to um like spend time to help me it was more just i got to use her data <laughs> and um i mean at most weekends she was the quickest driver so it was good to kind of have her to being on the same team and being able to see all her data and everything and i would get some tips from her here and there and um definitely kind of just me being able to watch how she carries herself throughout a race weekend was one of the bigger things that i've picked up this year definitely and going off it then how would you describe your rookie season my rookie season started off really well um i scored points in my first couple of races in miami and um i think overall i developed very well it's kind of a shame that we didn't get to go to these last two races because i was feeling really confident for those two races um, I'd spent some time testing over the summer break. And so I went into Singapore and was able to get up to speed quickly, but uh, I made a mistake in practice. So it took away some of those practice laps and then qualifying mm. was really wet. So the race, I was kind of just thrown in there and I had to figure it out. So, but I think I, I got up to speed rather quickly in the race. So had I gotten those practice laps. I definitely think I could have qualified higher and then finished the race higher. So there's some disappointing little bits here and there, um, like contact with other drivers and um, mm. that sort of thing. And um, overall, I didn't score as many points as I had wanted to, but I think that I showed the speed that I had the ability to, you know, be finishing higher up on the grid. And yeah, I was, I, I was, I was feeling really hopeful for these last two races. So, <laughs> I was going to say, have you uh, raced on the track at Austin before, or would that be totally new to you as well? I have done one race there last year, but it was a sports car race. Um, okay. It was an endurance race, so I have a lot of laps around there. <laughs> At least <laughs> you know where you're car. going. That's, that's the main yeah. thing. You start with stuff that. <laughs> and Miami as well. You start off the season there with a double header, as we as we said. How was that again? The American driver, American team in Miami. F1 is there for the first time in terms of just scale. And that's that's the place you make your debut. <laughs> How surreal again. Well, I keep trying to find a better word for surreal, but that's what I can feel like for that. Was that another kind of pinch me moment for you, or were you just kind of focused on on the racing itself? And then afterwards, like, holy cow, that just happened. Yeah, going to Miami was definitely a really, really cool experience. I mean first race my first time being at a formula one race as well on actually. Top of everything. <laughs> <laughs> and then also you know having it be the first time that formula one races in miami um you know brand new track for all the drivers and just the atmosphere of being around the american crowd it was just really cool to kind of like 
you know, I think that was probably one of the perfect places for me to have my debut. Just, you know, I didn't have to do all of that extensive travel. So I got into it pretty easily. And then, I mean, you know, it was a familiar place to me. And um, with Jenner being an American team and me being the American driver, I had a lot of support. And so that was definitely a big bonus for my first race weekend. Definitely. And um, you're just saying about F1 racing at the same time there as well. Makes me think I was to ask, because you've always been racing at least when Formula One is there, regardless of if it's Formula Two or Formula Three as well. Did you watch the other series as well to try and pick up some some tips maybe of where you could be improving on there? Or was it just focus on your own data or were you trying to absorb as much information from the other categories as possible? I definitely spent some time watching some of the other categories to see kind of what they were doing. Um, Mm. I typically, I would just kind of like watch it on the TV, but that was enough to see, um, you Mm. know, like different lines that they were taking, especially like racecraft type of things. Um, We we would get to see those on the TV. And so, yeah, I definitely did learn a good bit from just simply watching the other series. So it's probably an interesting thing that, you as a driver, especially on the same weekend as F1 and the other feeder series, depending on the on the race weekend, where no one else really has that, where they're going around, you can picture it completely. Yes, you can make a direct comparison to, oh, I know exactly what they're doing on that corner, and maybe they shouldn't be doing on this bit. And it's just, it's always, I always find that curious and interesting how you can associate the two there and like us at home, you've got that extra kind of advantage there. Yeah. <laughs> so then rookie season, not too bad overall considering and I'm just going to say like some mistakes made with the contact for example but again it's stuff where it's always going to happen at some point you know it's good to get it out the way early on what would you say was the most challenging aspect of the season for me the most challenging part was learning the tracks quickly um learning the car as well I've never driven the car before this year really and I didn't get much test time up until the summer break. So Hmm. for all the European rounds where they have already raced last year, um, that was a big, I guess, game of catch up the whole time. And qualifying is so crucial in these cars because it's not super easy to overtake and follow other cars. So I really had to work on just finding that speed quickly. And a lot of it came from just simply uh, not, quite knowing the car super well I mean we don't get much practice or qualifying time before the race so it's definitely very difficult to get up to speed super quick I mean Spain being the one that comes to mind there for incredibly close but you just can't get past it It would seem like it was frustrating lap of clubs like oh come on with with this close but it's just just no unfortunately yeah and as we were saying just before we started recording yes the timing for this interview is uh is a a little awkward in some respects. W Series was announced to have scrapped the last three rounds for this season uh, yesterday, and it's looking towards 2023, so we've got fingers crossed for that. What has W Series meant to you then, and what has it been like to be a part of it, especially as it's been on, on the global stage alongside Formula 1 this season? So I had definitely thought about this already, Um So far, um, W Series has done a lot to help me race this year on a big platform with Formula One um, in these these kind of cars at Formula One grade tracks. I had only previously raced in North America, so I've never really experienced such high quality tracks. And the cars obviously are completely different from North America over to Europe. Mm. And I guess being with Formula One as well and being able to see like how everything operates and also having, you know, all the supporters of Formula One watching us race in W Series, that's been really cool to experience. And it's definitely taught me a lot this year. And so, yeah, definitely fingers crossed for next year because I I feel very good that um, the improvements that I've made this year will carry into next year and I'll start getting some really good results. Definitely. And seeing Jamie go and have the test in Indy Lights as well, you think that's down to W Series as well, opening up some more doors, especially in America, as you say. 
would that be potentially something you're interested in doing in the future, regardless of what happened to the W Series? Just being the American driver who's been on, on the American Grand Prix now with Miami and kind of the spotlight is, is, is in your favor at the moment. Yeah, I mean, the US uh, has been just the, the, the exposure that Formula One's gotten in the US is crazy right now. Just, I mean, there's been so many new American fans of Formula One and European racing. And um, that also leads into more IndyCar viewers. And so it, I think overall racing as a whole is just getting bigger in America. So I've definitely thought about looking into doing um, something to get into IndyCar or, um, you know, IMSA. And hmm. I obviously I love racing in the US. I've been doing it my whole life. So uh, I, I'm definitely not opposed to pursuing a career here as well. <laughs> definitely. Got to do something in the meantime, haven't you? So might, might as well do a little bit of IMSA or IndyCar. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Switching tech slightly, when I was doing a little bit of research on you, I came across this, which I've got to ask about. Current Guinness World Record holder, holder for vehicle slalom with a time of 47.45 seconds. How did this all come about? <laughs> <laughs> So Porsche Cars North America had contacted me to do this record. So initially, communication was through the film company who had just produced all of the YouTube video for the record. And I mean, initially, I was like, oh, this sounds like a cool idea. But they wouldn't tell who the who the car company was. They just said, oh, it's a big car manufacturer and they want you to do this. I was like, OK. And so. Porsche turned out to be the company. And so they had this idea to do the record. Um, it was previously held by a Chinese professional driver. And it's it, it was kind of crazy how it all worked out, really. Like, I had never done anything with a company that big. And um, when I was younger, my dad auto-crossed a Porsche 944 Turbo. And so it was kind of like a association cool there is there. Yeah, yeah. It was kind of cool to just like, you know, go back and work with Porsche after I'd grown up around them and, hmm. you know, going to the Porsche Club of America events and just seeing all the Porsches. I, I've always loved those cars. And so, yeah, it was just really cool for me to be working with them. And so did it seem like it was a bit out of the blue, this suggestion, or, or what was your initial reaction when you got there? Because again, like you say, oh, well, we've got a big car company. So it's like, hmm, that seems a little sketchy. <laughs> Why aren't you saying? <laughs> yeah, I mean, it was definitely something different, completely different from what I've done before. Um, at this point in time, I hadn't even started racing cars. I was still racing go-karts. And I didn't even have my driving license at the time either. So... <laughs> Everybody it's more random by the thing. second. <laughs> yeah. Even more impressive that you've got the, the record then, in a way, isn't it? Yeah, it was definitely a lot harder to do than what most people might think. Um, it wasn't first attempt just, then? It was not first attempt, <laughs> no. Yeah, a lot of it came down to the weather, because even in the Northeast United States, it gets hot in the month of August. And so, you know, we would have to wait around for the weather and um, wait for the right day. So it it took a lot of time to really get everything perfect. And I think I think even still, I could probably beat my own record. So <laughs> yeah, she's still competitive. <laughs> That's always going to be the case, I think. <laughs> Away from motorsport, then I also noticed that you're an ambassador for Gift of Adoption Fund. What made you want to get involved with this? Well. So my siblings and I are all adopted. So naturally, it's just it just aligns really well with my family and something personal. So, um, you know, they had approached me through um, through a guy named Ralph Hansen, who's done some work in motorsports with um, like cause marketing and all of that sort of thing and um, gift of adoption had expressed an interest in me we had expressed an interest in them as well and it kind of just worked out perfectly really like it's it's something that's personal to me so it's not difficult to I guess explain it to it's people or fit. represent it yeah it's just fit really naturally and I enjoy 
working with them as well. So it works out really well. And so a lot of full circle stuff coming here with Porsche with the adoption fund. It's nice to see that all. Yeah. And um, if hopefully we get W Series next year, it'll be probably on the same weekends as F1 again, because that just makes logical sense. And as we've got 24 Grand Prix, big calendar, where would you like to go to ideally that you haven't had the chance to yet? Well, I would really like to race in Austin. That was yeah. probably one of the <laughs> most. Definitely noticed that. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I was really looking forward to going and racing in Austin. Like all my family was supposed to come out and um, my mom is a Texan. So she has family still down in Texas. And so that was that was one of the races where I was really looking forward to going to. And uh, so, yeah, definitely next year, I, I'm, I would love to go back to Austin and race with the F1 crowd and everyone again. A couple of fun non-motorsport-related questions to finish off then. If you could visit any event in history, which one would you choose and why? Any event? Mm-hmm. You know, <laughs> I, I don't know if this quite counts, but I have always wanted to go and see... Um, I mean, I've already been, but like I've wanted to go back again and yeah. see the Indy 500 again. I've only been once and I, I, I enjoyed like, it a the lot. The original, do you think there, if we're going history or have you got a specific year in mind? You know, actually, I think it would be kind of cool to go and see the older version, like when the Indy 500 was on the brick, um, mm. like the brick road. And so, yeah, I, I think that would be really cool to see. Yeah. I like that. Oh, that'd be pretty cool. Eh? Yeah, that's a good I like that answer. That's a good one. Now. <laughs> Just have to think about it. And then final question. Would you rather never get another present in your life, but always pick the perfect present for everyone else, or keep getting the perfect presents but giving terrible ones to everyone else? Oh, <laughs> uh, I don't know because, like, I feel like this could be taken so many different ways. <laughs> <laughs> I could either be really it. selfish or <laughs> really, <laughs> really generous. <laughs> If it helps, um, you'd be thinking you were giving the perfect one. They just all happen to be terrible. You wouldn't knowingly do it. Then it well, would be me, I, guess, I think. Yeah, I guess in that case, I would choose getting really good presents but giving really bad ones. Because if I at least like showed that I put in the effort, I, I think people <laughs> would at least appreciate that. <laughs> it makes for some funny stories as the years went by. This like, she keeps trying, but oh, these are awful. Oh yeah. <laughs> Oh, perfect. Well, it's been an absolute pleasure chatting with you today, and I want to wish you the best of luck for next year, regardless of where we see you. I'm hoping we're going to see you out on track with anywhere, probably North America at the very least, I'd imagine, knowing, knowing your history there. So thanks for being here, and best of luck. Thank you. Thanks again to Chloe for coming onto the curbs with me, and I'm looking forward to finding out where she goes next on her motorsport journey. Join me again soon when I'll be chatting to another famous face from the world of motorsport. And in the meantime, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe, and check out the other interviews on the On the Curbs YouTube channel. If you want to hear more from me, you can listen to me chat about F1, amongst other things, over on the Undercut podcast. And you can also hear me dissecting everything Nitro RX related, including chatting with special guests, over on the Nitro RX podcast. Both podcasts are available here on YouTube, as well as over on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and wherever else you like to listen. You can also follow me over on Instagram at t.helpers.daily.onthecurbs and read my various motorboard articles over on Is It Fast and Paddock Serenity. Thank you for listening, and I'll see you again next week for the next episode.